Okay, I'm on live, guys. My chillins. So, this is new that I'm uh, looking at here. Interesting. Okay. Um, hi. Welcome to Punky Pie Babies. Uh, let me just make sure that I got all this together here. <laughs> yeah, YouTube did a whole bunch of new things since I've been live. So it's very interesting. Okay. Let's see if this will work. If I can see myself. All right. Okay. We're oh good. Uh, so I'm going to be as requested. I had a couple of people who asked me how I do my hair rooting. So I was going to get that all started. So I have these twins that I've been working on for a few, a few months, a while. Um, but I had like custom orders that took precedence. So um, I, uh, I, uh, put them aside for a while, but they be, only because I really wanted to really concentrate on them. So, um, this is the Elise kit by Cassie Brace. Um, the lighting isn't that great. I have my, my work light here, so it's kind of washed out, but yeah, so that's Elise. And then this is Evelyn by... Cassie Brace as well. And they both need some hairs. So uh, one second, I'm going to I'm gonna give uh, people a moment because they said they wanted to show. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, uh, Oops. Roki? Yep. Really? Uh. Okay. All right. Um, what else do I need to do here? Just going to... Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> I have my other computer here, so why am I not able to do this? Okay. All right. Um, okay. So the first thing that I highly recommend to everybody who is doing hair rooting, my process anyways, what I highly recommend are prism print, not pencils, <laughs> um, pencils. Let me just make sure, is this okay? Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. I think we're, should be okay. Um, the reason being, and I got these, I got most of my stuff from, um, McPherson Crafts. Oh, there's a Crayola one in here. Don't use the Crayola. It doesn't, it's not the same. Um, so these are all my prism pencils. And uh, they do have a set there. If I remember, I'll put a link. But so these are the colors. And you can see that they're all very, very close to hair color. Now, I am a strong believer that Roki... Sorry guys, um, I'm a huge believer that um, that hair, well, it's not even a believer, it's truth, that hair has many different colors. It's not just a brown, it's not just a black, it's not just 
is not. Um, All right, so <laughs> I had to deal with something. Okay, so as I was saying that I highly recommend you get a variety of different colors because um, you're gonna need them. And especially for mapping um, uh, or for eyebrows, because um, you wanna create a dimension. And sometimes, you know, with the baby hairs and stuff like that, it's always good to create with different kinds of colors. So for this baby, these babies, my twins, my beautiful twins, um, I'm going to be using this hair and this is adult mohair that I got from a person as well. And this hair is absolutely gorgeous. And I believe they called this light, was this light brown? Golden brown, I think it was. Hang on. And then it's going to get like this. This is a uh, water with conditioner. Okay, so I uh, yeah. so what I usually do is I usually just spray the hair with um, with conditioner. I no longer use ruby red because it's the quality is really not that great. It's great for beginners or if you want to do like um, like small tufts of hair, but for full for a full head of hair and for my babies, I always I kind of, you know, either go hard or go home. You know what I'm saying? So I <laughs> I use um, and this is some alpaca as well. So I use I tend to use let's get the words right. I tend to use um, adult mohair because I love the way it falls. It's um I believe it's stronger because a lot of my my customers they like to comb the hair and play with the hair so i find that um the adult mohair is a lot stronger and um it's thicker like per strand it's thicker than you know like an alpaca or yearling and um but i do use those as well uh, I'm gonna show you the different kinds of hair. I don't have a whole bunch because I've used them all for my dolls, but this is alpaca. This is an alpaca hair. And as you can see, I don't know if you can really see, but um, yeah, you can see, see the little flyaways. That's how thin this hair is. So this would be great for like newborn, like fresh newborn babies. Um, but again, it's very, very thin, like super, super thin. Uh, the tendency to break this hair is a lot um, is a lot easier. You, you can break this a hell of a lot easier. I'm not going to break this hair, but um, so what I suggest you guys do is if you're making a doll and it's for your own use, for your own play, this would be great because it's very soft to um, comb and to you know, to style, but I don't recommend this for children. I don't recommend this for a doll that you're going to be brushing hair all the time or, you know, changing all the time. This is more, I would suggest this to be more for like baby hairs or for um, display dolls because not because it's a bad product, but because it's very, very delicate. So there's that. Okay, so that's what I use for that. So and this is the difference. I mean, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but per hair, it's a lot thicker. Yeah, see, you can see that it's a lot thicker than those ones. Okay, um, I don't know, let me see if I have any more. All right, so 
I'll get into all my other tips and tricks. Now this hair, I get, and I'm in Canada, so I get my um, doll hair for, this one is, I believe this is half an ounce, half an ounce for 55 bucks. Um, and this is the deepest dark hair, and this is why I love, love, love this hair. It's so pretty. So I'll show you the different colors that I have so far. Because why not? And again. And it comes with a lot. Like, that's another thing I want to mention is that with this hair, you have so much. Now, when it comes to a, like a smaller head baby, um, I will cut these in half. Like I will take this, cut it in half, cut it here, and then I'll cut it in half this way. And always, when you cut it, always make sure you know that it always has to run this way. The, go with the grain, don't go against, because then the hair will look all kinds of crazy unless you like that kind of crazy look, but I don't. I like to make sure that it runs the same way. So always make sure you know where you're holding it. And then if you're doing the half, then you've got the half there, and then you cut it in half there. Okay, move it. Um, yeah, so and this is the hair color and look how pretty it is. And you can see all the different, and this is what I mean. So you can see like there's dark, Looks almost black, but then you have like the highlights of brown and stuff. So I tend to put like, you know, I'll mix some of this in there. And depending how dark I want to make the hair. So these are the different colors. This is what I have on hand right now. I obviously got to pick up more hair. But yeah, I think that's the same color as well. So yeah. Hairs. Hairs. All right, so I'm gonna leave that one out. Put these back. This is deepest dark brown. This is the dark brown. Okay, so the one I pulled out right now is the deepest dark brown, which is like close to a black. And get rid of any scragglies. You don't need those because those are annoying. And this is the dark brown, which has a little bit more golden in it. And this is a very popular color for my customers. Oops. Pretty. Again, this is uh, this is adult mohair. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go on to the needles. And I'm just going to go through all the tools that I use now. So um, when we get to actually rooting the babies, then you'll have all the info. Okay. What I use um, now, I used to buy all kinds of uh, needles from Bountiful. And they were the metal needles. And I had the mushroom wood handle and stuff like that. None of that worked. I would break needles like crazy. And... Um, it also depends on what type of vinyl you have. So I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna tell you what I would use them for because I'll tell you right now, hair, the type of hair you use is super important and also how squishy your doll head is. Like if you can see, these are very squishy. And so they're probably gonna be a dream to root, I'd imagine. These are definitely. Now, sometimes when you get some vinyl, and this is not, has anything to do with where you get your vinyl from, but when you get a doll that has, that is vinyl, and then you decide to root it or you paint it and you heat it up, or depending on what kind of paints you use, um, especially, but I find, especially when you heat it up, the vinyl chemistry can change. So I have had a doll where I've painted the doll and it was gorgeous. And when I went to root it, the hair got, the, sorry, the uh, sculpt itself, the vinyl got so hard, it broke every needle. So um, be aware of that, but there are ways that you can still root that hair. Okay. So what I am gravitating to when I've been using for the last 
four years now is um, they're called Heavenly Illusions Needles and they have rubberized um, tips or not tips, but um, holders, I guess to say. These are all, okay, I have a separate tube for the needles that I've used and I'll show you the different kinds. Now, the green one, let me see. So the green one is a 40 gauge needle. Now, the higher the number of the needle, the thinner the needle is. Now, when people say, oh, I just want the thinnest needle. No, you don't. Um, you don't need the thinnest needle to get the best look because one, if you get a thin needle, the chances of it breaking are a lot easier. And they're more for a steady hand and more for um, delicate detail work. Now, I'm not saying that people can't do it. I'm saying as a beginner, I highly recommend you get a um, thicker needle. So I don't have, all mine are 40 gauge and up. So um, these are the green ones. And as you can see, <laughs> show you, this is how much I wear out my needles. And it's because like I, you know, I, I can't use any other tool. Like it has to be like a pencil to me. Now these ones have three barbs on them. And what the barbs are, they're little hooks that are like grooved into each of the needles. So this is like a triangle shape. Um, so you can see how it's shiny. That's the flat part there that's flashing. And um, so what I tend to do, here's a trick, okay? This little hook, pay attention to that because that will help you with your direction because when you root, sometimes you'll twist it. So when you have it this way, I find that I have found with these needles, when I hold the hook this way, I will catch the hair. There's a hook right there. I can feel it right underneath. So you can feel it. So how you hold the needle is also super, super important. Okay, so these are my favorite needles of all time to use because um, they catch the hair. The, ne the hole themselves that they leave in the vinyl is like next to nothing and um, they're a really good needle. So that's my favorite needle to use. And yeah, I keep them because, you know, they're not broken or anything. Now, these pink ones, now these are also, uh, these are all my favorite needles that I'm using right now. So these high pink ones, again, Heavenly Illusions, and these are 42 gauge three barks. Same type of thing, except they're a lot, a lot um, thinner. Now, um, these ones, you can see, I'm going to show you, you guys are going to laugh at this one. Look at all the needles I broke. And I, I kept these specifically to show you guys um, what happens. Okay. So, like I said, I hold them all with the hook up. And you can see this will happen when your angle is wrong. This will bend. Um, that has nothing to do with your technique or anything. It just has everything to do with the angle. Um, this is what it looks like. And it really <laughs> depresses when it breaks off like this. Uh, and then this one, again, same thing. You can see that my angle was incorrectly done. So I bent it. So those ones, you know, you really, you don't need to keep them, but I had them in here to show you guys. But yes, I have broken many a needle. And I'll also show you when I have a favorite needle, I will wear it. I will wear it. I'll use it. Hi, Julie Brewer. Um, for, sorry, I should have been looking at messages. Um, so it's best to get the adult mohair. I highly recommend the adult mohair. I do. Because it's stronger. You get more of it. Okay, because if you think about it, um, for each baby head, you're only going to need, like, honestly, I'll tell you guys, I would say for a tiny bit, not these babies, these are big babies, um, for a newborn or a preemie, you will probably use, okay, and I'm going to include if you put it in half. And I'm going to say you cut it in half because it's easier to style and it's easier to comb it and you don't waste as much hair. So 
you could, for a newborn, a full head, you could use this much of this adult hair because of the length of it. That's all you need. So you, right here, you could do, I would say, oh God, I, I think probably like eight babies at least, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, and if you think about it, um, when you get a smaller package, I don't have one because I don't use it anymore. But when you get the other ones, they're like $11 and stuff like that. But the chances of the quality, it's going to be ratty over time. Um, I do have a doll. I'll show you her. Um, she has the, um, has the Ruby Red mohair. And it's, you know, it's lasted, but I don't comb it as much. You know what I mean? I don't really brush the hair or anything, but I'll show you what the difference is. So, um, yes, I do highly recommend um, adult mohair. And McPherson is awesome. It's $55, uh, and it's Canadian, so do your currency conversion. But, um, you know, people have asked me if I do, like, Slumberland or all those stuff, and I don't because shipping is ridiculous, and I don't want to spend a hundred dollars American. <laughs> so, and this is the, the best quality that I've ever gotten. So I'm going to show you the difference. So I'll be right back. Hi, Betsy. This is my sister right there. Uh, that's my mess. Hold on. Okay. All right. So these are my babies and I will show you the difference. Now, um, this is Samantha, right? She is the, what sculpt is she? Sorry. Let me think, let me think, let me think. I believe Man, I can't remember the name. But anyways, I love this baby. I got him from about, this was a baby I got years ago. Like, this is one of my first babies I made. And I got her from Bountiful Baby. Sorry, baby, I'm going to put this one. Can you hold this baby? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> all right. So this is the hair that I got from Bountiful. And this is Ruby Red mohair. This is one of my first rooting jobs I've ever done. So we'll just comb her hair. Now I don't role play with my dolls. I, you know, they're basically for display. Um, look how cute. Like, you know, I, she's very basic Brit, like first doll I've ever made, but the hair compared to this one is very coarse, very coarse. It feels like like when you get your hair dye or bleached, it's got that coarseness to it and it's broken up. And I, like I said, I don't, I don't comb my doll's hair. I don't do any of that, but look over time, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to see if you can see it but over time, oh, a little thingy here in a minute. Sorry, little girl. So Samantha, over time, you'll see that it balds. It just breaks off just from lying down. Now, mind you, I think for a beginner, um, you know, it's a good thing to practice with, but I personally, you know, we didn't, I didn't have, like I've been doing this for almost 10 years and there's, I had, didn't have very many options for hair. So I just went with Ruby red. Um, but now that you, if you're a beginner and there are options, get better quality automatically. Now, I love her. She will never leave because she's just, look at, she's so terrified of the world. She's like, no, I love her. So that's Samantha. Oh, gosh. So that's her hair. We'll put Samantha over here for a minute. Okay. Can I have her? 
That's okay. Now, this, this is baby Elizabeth. She is the Sienna Ray sculpt by, oh, that's by Cassie Brace as well, limited edition. I rooted her hair with adult mohair and I kept her hair long because I, I thought I was going to do a hair cutting video. Um, I still may do that, but for now, I just loved her hair. So I know her hair is a little messy. She's been sleeping. <laughs> She's been laying down. Um, so let me just comb her hair so I can show you. All right. So I'll show you her hair. Okay. So if you can see, I even did her lashes as well. But this is adult mohair. Thank you. Yeah, I love my babies. Okay, and this is like as I went. So as you can see, I'll even give you an example. Look how long this hair is compared to the baby's hair right now. So when it's a newborn, you know, obviously, you know, all this is going to be cut off, right? But so, and then here, here in the front. I love the way it styles. It styles like a real, like real hair. So the feel of the, mo the adult mo mohair is better for me. Uh, it's softer and um, it's, it is a lot easier to work with. So if you're new, go with quality. Yeah, it's very shiny and very like, it looks real, right? It looks like healthy, healthy and not so um, dry. And then even the lashes, I rooted the lashes with the mohair as well, with the adult mohair. And I love, I love big long lashes because why not? I don't, I wish I could have all the long lashes, but they're, it happens with age. But anyways, um, yeah. So, yeah, and then it's just easier. I don't know. I just, I personally love this kind of hair. So I'm going to recommend, highly recommend that you guys go for adult mohair. Um, it's easier to work with, and you're going to get less frustrated, especially when it breaks. I'm so shiny. Exactly. And that's my personal kind of thing. Um, I always go for quality over quantity because... When you have the quality, you're not going to worry about it and you're not going to be have that disappointment because when you have a good quality hair, I'm telling you, even if you do a half ass job, it will look great. <laughs> it will look really good. So that's Elizabeth. So she's going to go sit with her sister. And yes, I love my babies floppy because they're so cute. Okay. Okay. So there's that. Um, all right. Okay. So I rooted um, Samantha's hair with, I think it was a 38 gauge silver needle. And I rooted Elizabeth's hair with the green 40 gauge. Now there's other ones that you can use as well. Okay, so we went through the pink, the pink with the ones that I bent the hell out of. Now, I love the pink ones. I usually use these ones, which are 42 gauge and three barb. I use these ones because the barbs are equally around the, um, the needle. So they're perfect for getting into lashes, closed eyed lashes. I haven't tried the open eyed lashes because um, a lot of the babies that I've had have like, you know, they're kind of squinting, squinting. So it's, um, I don't know, if I were to root them, I'd feel like it wouldn't look very realistic. So um, I will either leave, leave them blank or I will put um, strip lashes in them. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the pink one. Again, this is the 42 gauge. And that's what it looks like. And then um, the smallest needle. Oh, wait, sorry. No. And I just got these one. This is a one barb, 42 gauge, and they're um, 
These ones are a little bit more tricky. Okay. Now, when people are talking about um, the fork needles and, oh, you have to get these to make it look good, you know. Okay. If you get a fork needle, I'll tell you right now, you're, you may be good at it, but you're going to have, if you're a beginner, you're going to be frustrated because the angle of it is straight up and down for a fork needle. This is a fork needle. It's duller than, um, than all the other hair, uh, hair needles that are rooting needles I use. So the barb is on the bottom or the hook is on the bottom. So it, you have to hold it this way. There's no way you can angle it or go around or anything like that. And I'm a very, my artistic way is, you know, you kind of have to move your hand with yeah. the base of the head or the, the head itself. So fork needles, yes, it's great for people who are very experienced with it or they like that kind of a hold. But I personally find that fork needles are a lot harder for um, people to use because you're not going to get as many hair. You're not going to have a guaranteed grasp of the hair. So I wouldn't recommend uh, fork needles. I've never, I've tried to use fork needles and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I was like, this is just a waste of my, like, I'm like, oh, this is just a waste of my time. So I don't use the fork needles at all. Um, I wanted to try these one barb needles for detail work. And again, you can kind of feel it where the barb is. So with these ones, I can feel the barb. So the barb, the hook is down. So when I'm going to use this one, the hook will be down. I haven't used it. It's not a fork. It's on the side only. But that's how I root. So I haven't used these yet. So I will let you know what I think of these. And the only reason I do these is probably is for detail work, more for detail work than anything. All right put my worn needles look at I'm like so attached to these needles because I've made like so many babies like I don't want to throw them out I know I've got a hoarding issue with my needles okay so those are the needles I use now brushes I I purchased this comb and this is a razor comb I also got these all my stuff is from McPherson again, like I said. So I got this from McPherson as well. I don't know if they have any more of them. I just found it there and I think it was like a onesie twosie type thing. But I love this comb. To cut baby's hair, this is the perfect way because when you cut it, um, when you cut the hair, it it um how do you cut it kind of layers it as you as you razor cut it. Sorry, let me just look at some questions here. Fork needles are good for eyelashes, right? Um, I don't know. I don't use um, them for eyelashes because there's, I found what works for me. Like I find that when you have more, okay. When you have one hook, one bar for eyelashes, that's it. That's all you got is that one chance to get it. Uh, I um, I like to make progress. I like to make 100% progress. I don't like to get frustrated. I don't want to redo because the more you poke holes into your vinyl, um, the more noticeable it will be and the more you'll destroy it. And um, I, I like to do, I like to have a guarantee. It's basically what I like to do. So what I, I use is the, um, is the uh, three bar of needles. Because when you root it, like when I rooted her hair, Eliz or Elizabeth's eyelashes, um, I used the more barbs, the three barb, and beautiful. I got them every time, and every time they went in, every time the hair went in, it was beautiful. It was like butter. So um, I'm not saying you don't have to. If, if you can work with a fork needle, go for it. I don't believe in the fork needles. I feel like you, I like to make progress. I like to have thick hair. I like to have them in there. And yeah, so um, yeah, so I don't really use them for, I don't really don't use the fork needles. Yes, I have tried it. I've totally tried it, but I don't tend to like it. So, okay. So another thing you're going to need before you start hair rooting is a brush. So you have this comb. This is like after, of course, you can cut as you go, as you root. I don't. I like to leave the hair um, all long before and, um, and then at the end I'll cut it. So you always need a comb. Um, I used to use toothbrush. 
I still use occasionally, but I got this, you can feel the stiffness, it's plastic and it's the way that this kind of plastic, I don't know, it's just, it's for teeth. So um, this was specifically designed and the, the bristles are so... Uh, Julie, uh, I'm very progress driven also about wanting to look awesome. Exactly. And that's my goal too. You know, I want to be progress driven as well. And whenever I, I've been doing this for many years and this is what works for me. So, I mean, if you have another technique, awesome, but, um, yeah, so I got progress and it looks fabulous. So, um, those are the tips and tricks that I do. So, um, for brushing, I would definitely hang on to um, you can either have a toothbrush or get one of these or even a comb. I don't recommend the baby brushes. And I'll tell you why, because they will bring more static. They will cause you a lot of static. See, just by touching it over time, like, I mean, you're going to condition it and wash it. So it won't, um, you're just a beginner. Yeah. So you will, it will work. So I guarantee you, if you use more barbs, you're guaranteed to get the hair into your doll, guarantee it. Um, all right, let me see here. Um, 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 um. All right, so you can need a brush. Okay, clips, you will need clips like this, or you got even have like a baby clip, and then that will clip the hair out of your way, because I like to, when you're working with it, as I, I'll show you, um, you're gonna be moving the head around a lot, and um, you're gonna wanna get that hair out of the way. So um, get some clips or something, but make sure, remember that the hair is not glued. So you have to have something that's very, very delicate. And when you clip it, don't do it tight. Like when, you know, when you're doing your own hair, your child's hair or something like that, because it's not glued yet. So be very, very careful. Be very ginger with it. Um, for combing, I even use this small comb. This is a rabbit comb. And I loved it because you can get really, really into it. See, like it's, this is a thin hair, but it will really comb it out. So um, a comb with thin bristles like that or teeth like that is a great one. Scissors. Um, these are my eyelash scissors. They're actually my sewing shear or uh, snippers. But uh, I highly recommend you get a small pair of scissors. Why? Because I feel that when you have a big pair of scissors and then you're trying to trim the eyelashes, the chances of you scrap or scraping the vinyl are, I'd say, about 85%. So, and I think that mentally people, when you have a smaller pair of scissors, you tend to be a lot more careful. So when I cut the lashes... I cut this way. I cut into and around. So it'll form like a more natural look instead of like a straight blunt cut. So get yourself a pair of small scissors and also get your pair, get yourself a pair of um, actual scissors, which I have here. Let's see. And then you get your regular old haircut hair cutting scissors. The, these I only use at the end. Okay. All, all right. So I think we got all the basics. Oh, oh, big. Oh, sorry. Brad. This is a very, very big. You must have. You must have tweezers. You have to have tweezers. Um, because when you're rooting, you will get uh, some, like my, sometimes you'll get two hairs in one hole, three hairs, four hairs, and you wanna remove those one by one. So tweezers are the best way to do that. Another thing, if you don't wear glasses, um, I have 20-20 vision. However, when I'm working on dolls, I use my visors. This is a highly recommend. This is the Carson one, I got it from Amazon. It's got a light on it. You may look really kooky and funny. My kids laugh at it, but I'll tell you one thing. It gives your detail work. Yeah, you can see all your details, one. And 
you will save your eyes. I can root for hours and hours because it's a very relaxing thing for me. And over time, my eyes get a little kooky. So I highly recommend you get a pair or you can even have the magnifying um, mirrors, the craft mirror or sorry, craft. What are they called? Not mirrors. Um, magnifying glass. And um, as long as you have any kind of detail work that's going to help with your eyes, I highly recommend that. Because you, your tools, your main, your biggest tools are your eyes and your hands. So you don't want to screw that up. Okay, so let's get on with it. So, wow, my son. Okay. So this is the, since this is the hair color that I'm deciding, um, what I usually do is I'll take a couple colors that I think it has in here. So I'm just choosing the colors here. So I would say that these colors are probably the closest. Now, the reason why I say that, if you look at it, you can see all the different shades and highlights of the hair. Okay, so those are the ones I'm gonna use. Now, I usually, because the skin, you need to do a little bit of a contrast on the skin. So the first thing you do, you take your head, you look at it, and you think of where you're going to put the swirl. Now, for this one, um, just I'm going to just pick one. We're going to put a swirl in here. And how I do it is like this. I don't know if I can. Okay. If you can see that, can you guys see that? Okay. If I go closer, sorry, I'm looking at the other screen so I can see if you guys can see it all right. Oh, okay. There. Okay, so you basically make a little C there. Can you see it okay, guys? Or hold it there for a minute so you guys can see it. Okay. So you start with a, like, a little C. And if you look at, you know, if you study people's hair, your own hair, your children's hair, your friend's hair, I personally grab my whoever, like my husband, <laughs> I grab his head, whoever. You can see the way the hair is, um, is done. Let me see if I can turn this a little bit this way. Okay. All right. So that is going to be where your swirl is. Now what I usually do is you leave this so you know where it is, but then you're going to map out where, how else the hair is going to go. So when it comes to the back of the head, just like your own hair, it's going to come down like this. So you have to make lines that are going to show you. Okay. Okay. Now, naturally, when your hair is growing, when it's growing in this in this circle, it's going to have a natural part. It's going to have a natural part, probably going to, let's see, this is going to be going to my right. Okay? So you have to follow that. So when you have your hook, always remember you're going this way, in this like in the swirl. So for me, I'm going to do... Let me 
just take a look at what it looks like here. Now I always, okay, even though if you're gonna be, if you want like a smaller forehead, I always bring it like a little bit further back, the pencil, because obviously you don't want to, to show. Um, you're gonna, don't worry about erasing these or anything like that because they will, we, you'll wash them off. It's very, you can wash these off. All right, so then, um, okay, so now we're going to this side. So I'll show you what I did here on this side. Okay, so then you're going to take it and you're going to keep going around on this side. So this is where the part is going to be. Now you don't have to have a part, but um, just know that there's, you know, realistically there's going to be some kind of a, a break, even with your own hair. So now that you have it mapped out, Hopefully you guys, if you have any questions, let me know now while I'm looking. <laughs> okay, so this is how I map the baby hair, the baby's head, I mean. Now all these lines have a different meaning, but for me, you're coming all the way all the way down, okay? So when you're flowing, remember, when your hair lies flat down this way, so your hair, all babies, their hair grows from the crown. So everything goes from the crown, which means, in turn, I'm gonna, your quick tip here is your needle goes to the crown. Your angle is going to, so you're gonna push the hair with the needle towards the crown. And that's the way it lays. So let me just move these pencils before I accidentally draw on my child's face. <laughs> All right, let me just take a drink here. Okay, now I'm gonna take a brand new green needle. And I'll show you. how I begin. Now, I'm not going to wear my visors right now. Hopefully, I can see. If I go blind, I'm blaming everybody in the stream. <laughs> but, okay. So, we're going to always start with the crown. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this beautiful hair, and I usually take about this much. Now, I'm not going to be cutting this baby, this hair in half because he's a very large head. It's a bigger head baby. <laughs> it's my son. Put your shirt on. Um, so I'm going to leave the hair uh, long. And I always pull it tight and get as close to the rubber band as possible. Now, what you're gonna see is sometimes, you know, when the animal hair is growing, you'll see like a little bit of light tips. You see that? Um, I cut those. Because, um, it can be a little bit difficult to see and I wanna make sure I can see. All right, so I'm gonna take about this much hair. Okay. And I twist it so I can hold it better. And I'm gonna see if I can bring it down this way. Okay. Now what I do is I usually feel for, I use my finger and I feel where the barb is. And I can feel it catching on my finger there. So the barb is on the bottom, hook is up this way. So we're gonna start at the swirl. Now, 
here is where I tell you about how the hook is different. Now, when you are doing the, um, the, what do you call it? The fork needle, you have to go this way. Okay. I like to go this way. Now, when you're doing the knee, make sure you follow your line. Okay. And that's what you're going to follow right there. And I take that much, go as close to, but you know, maybe a quarter of the in, an inch in, and you take it in an angle. Angles are very, very important. So this is not normally how I hold it, but this is for purposes. And again, I'm going towards the towards the uh, point or the crown, and I'm going to follow that line. I'm going slow. I usually go a lot faster than this, but I'm going to go slow so you guys can see the angle. And guaranteed, see? Guaranteed hair. Okay. So you take it again. And then you can, like, you know, you can move it around so you can see. But technically, if you see where it is, where your hair is at. You see? Guaranteed. And then you get that instant gratification that, yay, I'm actually rooting. <laughs> again, you take your strand again. Okay. And you can follow the line or you can go anywhere you want, but I'm going to infer demonstration purposes. I'm just going to follow the line so you can understand how you're rooting. Okay, now, now that it's coming this way, okay, it's kind of hard to show, but again, you're going to follow your line. See the line? You're going to keep following the line towards the crown this way. Don't be afraid to move your needle in, your, in the doll's head. It's very, very important that um, you realize that it's not just the technique of getting the hair in. It has to be, you have to watch your angles. So I just did like some areas in there. And right now, one hair each. I love this mohair so much, guys. Okay. So I'm going to go a little bit faster and I'll show you. You can see I just go randomly. Everybody has their own way, but I love to go randomly because I feel like it'll just have a nat more natural outcome. You see that? So when you're combing this hair, yeah, let me just fill in this little piece here. Now I don't like pulling it usually, but I'm just trying to show you how it lays. And then you can take your, well, you should spray the brush because it's, you don't want it to be soaked and you don't want to lose your marks. So there you can see yes. the hair. And you can already see that it's already staying in that direction.
Okay. So, um, since this is And my goal is to make sure you guys don't get frustrated because I, you know, I have a lot of um, people who ask me for your, my help and I, I've been through it. I've been through the um, a frustration of not getting the hair to work or um, not being, not figuring out how to hold the needles and stuff. And I'm telling you guys nowadays, you guys have a lot more help than I did. I had no help. I had maybe one video. I think it was a secrets video. And I did the whole quick stabbing felting way and um, it worked, but I didn't, you know, it's, it looked like a doll, right? It didn't look natural. So um, again, I'm just taking it to this side and I'm just randomly pushing in the hair. Yeah, see? Yeah, it is a must have. I have to have a, a brush to comb it out. Let's see, so now we're changing. We're just, all you're doing, guys, you don't change. I'm telling you right now, do not change your angle as far as your hand and the way you're moving because that's how you can hurt your, you get tired wrists, um, frustration, and breaking needles. So always move your head around. Now I usually have a, um, I'll show you my rooting pillow. It's god awful, but. This is my rooting pillow. I always put a cloth on it and I put the baby head on there. Maybe that's a little bit easier for you guys to see too. So we'll do that. So it's easier to turn the baby's head than it is to turn your angle because then you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I had that angle and I now I'm, I'm not getting any hair. All right. So again, I'm gonna follow this line here. And I'm trying to find where I hold it up and we're going to follow the line. So as you can see, my angle hasn't changed. And I like the way that when it's on the side, you have that better angle naturally. So you, you the hair has no choice but to go in an angle and to stay flat. And like I said before, you know, I have no doubt that people can do it with a, a fork needle, but I don't. I don't like to struggle. <laughs> I'm off the struggle bus. Okay. And then I'm going to do a couple more. Again, same angle. I'm just turning the head. Don't be afraid. If you sealed your doll properly and varnished it and everything like that, the face will be fine. You can rub it all day and it's not going to hurt it. So make sure your paint is very is completely cured before you start um, rooting. All right. So, and I can see here that I've got, I've missed some spaces. So let's put some back in there. And it's just so much easier. Now, blonde hair and light hair is really difficult to see sometimes. So the fact that I'm not even using my visor is, it must be a good day for my eyes today. Oops. And a little eyelash in there. My eyelash. I know, weird. Okay. So again, we're going to fill in the spaces where I saw. Okay. I'm going to show you guys what we have so far. And that took, I don't know how long. I should have timed it. 
when you have the right angle, your work will go so much faster. You have all the right tools and the right um, techniques. I'm telling you, you're not going to be as frustrated with it. So and then you can comb it to see where it's going to lay. But as you can see right now, that's how she's laying. So I hope I'm not missing any questions, but OK. What do you think? So far, so good. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to like finish up the strand. And then if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to finish it, finish up as much as I can here, and we'll see what we look like. And then I'll give you a little tip on how to create the actual swirl. What is amazing is that, you know, just this is like a whole new way of doll making. And I'm so excited that we all, I found it, you know, like it's, this is something that I, I always loved dolls since I was a kid. So making dolls this way has always been my, it's my dream. This is my dream job. I love doing it. And see what I mean? Like you don't have to struggle. My, as you can see, my hand isn't moving, same angle. Um, I like to see where the hair is going into, and you can see that. And so far, I'm telling you guys right now, I haven't had, I haven't seen two hairs in one hole yet. Yeah. Okay. So almost done. Now I'm rooting this sparsely. Um, with Elizabeth, her hair is really thick. Okay, so for, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to try and do two in one hair. Two in one hair? No. Two hairs in one hole. Let me see if I can do it. This is how I used to root this way. And then I would root between my thing. It's, it's good. It's, you know, it helps when you want to see it. Um, but you're guaranteed to get more per uh, hole. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, so you can see here, there is probably about, I don't know, maybe about four <laughs> hairs in there. And again, that's how I held my hair, how I held the hair, right? I held it like this, so it's gonna pick up more than one hair, right? So you take your tweezers. Okay, so you use your tweezers. And you can see like that looks, you know, it looks like a huge plug. So all you do, what I do if, is I just try to grab one. Now, um, you don't squeeze it till you pull it all out. You kind of um, coax it out. And whatever hair comes out is what you take out. Do you know what I mean? There. And gone. Easy. Easy breezy. Now, when your hair, your hair will eventually stick out like this, and that's just from you pulling, then I do take it and I just cut it. Because you want to make sure that you see all the hair. I'm actually going to get rid of that. See in my angle, I don't know if you can see it, but the angle that I had on to, for demonstrations, it made the hair stick right up. So I'm just gonna remove the whole thing. We don't want 
alfalfa hair. I feel like rooting should be a time for you just to um, relax, have your coffee. I usually watch um, hair rooting videos or painting videos as I'm rooting or watch a movie or something. Sometimes I'll, um, my husband and I will watch a movie together and I'm like covered in hair <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm watching. But, um, oh, another tip. I'm going to say is pick yourself up an apron. I highly recommend it or you're going to get hair everywhere. Like this hair will cling to you. And it's a good thing. Like, you know, when you have static in the hair, just know that it's because it's clean. You know, like sometimes uh, if the hair is lying flat and not flying away, then, you know, it's filled with something. And you, I've noticed that with um, the big difference with the ruby red. Okay, I'm going a little bit spacious here, so I'm gonna go back here a bit. And this is what I love about rooting is that um, when you get your groove or you get your needle right, you can go back and you can you know, put more hair in a certain spot. and Because if you look at a baby's hair, um, some baby's hair is falling out, some is like turning into adult hair. So um, you're gonna, you're gonna see different kinds of looks. So don't be so upset if you have like maybe one or two hairs in one, in one, because it's a natural thing. Like the baby is growing, it's, it's ad adult hair have to stay realistic. And here I'm just filling up some holes. I don't know if you guys can see it because I can't see very well from the angle because I'm trying to show you guys. I've left some holes. So I'm just going to go back. And if you're in a rush to do something, like you got to get groceries or you got to go to school or work or whatever, don't root because you will break needles. You will get frustrated. And you may have to rip out your, your doll's hair. Now, um, I'm going to show you the front. So this is what we've done so far. Not too bad, right? They always look so funny <laughs> when their hair's not in. But yeah, so what I'm gonna continue to do is you continue to follow the line all the way to the back. Now, um, I do not, I'll tell you this right now, I do not do the top of the hair. I leave that for like maybe the last third of the hair because when you're rooting, the hair is always moving like this. And um, if you put hair here too uh, prematurely, if you do it too early in the rooting game, your hair is gonna pull out. The hair can like come off and it can get really tangled and messy. So leave the top part for close to the end, like a third of the way. Now, um, now we're gonna talk about the angle. Now this, is a very difficult, this is where you can break a lot of needles, okay? So again, you still have your need, your um, lines. So I'm just gonna darken something. Don't be afraid to go back and like, darken up your lines so you can see it. If you're following on this line, even if you don't get all of the pencil mark off, per se, um, you won't be able to see it, so. 
as long as you cover those lines, you'll be good. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do the base. So what I usually do is once I'm getting past here, I'll start working on the base. And I like to I like to bring it up here so then I don't have to look at the back of the, the head anymore and it could just stay put. Uh, so, so then by the time you get up here, you know, it's, you're going to be moving on like this. And then, so when it's time to do the front, that back's already done. And then you can work and do your more detail work because your face is the most important part. You got to do your angles, the hairline and stuff like that. So there's a lot more to work with in the front. So leave that for last. Now with this one, you're going to put your baby's head flat down with the opening up. And I don't know if you can see the inside of the hole there, but you can see how far, um, there it is. So you can see how far I get my, the hairs into the head, into the vinyl. Okay, so now when you feel the back of your head, um, how can I say this? Okay, so you go with right, here now the hair doesn't have to come right here i wouldn't put it right on the neck because that will be a little bit difficult so i would start just just above just above that mark and that bend all right so i'm going to just start in the middle so you guys can see or maybe this way so you guys can see this is probably going to be the hardest one now the trick is you got to hold it don't be afraid to squish this. This is, it's it's good. It's it, Don't be afraid. Like I said, as long as you seal it, you won't have a problem. Now you gotta hold it so there's no bouncing. When it bounces, when your needle bounces like that, guaranteed it's gonna break. So you gotta hold it tough, hold it tough. So when you put the needle in, it's there's no bounce. See, if I, if I don't, compared to that, so. You're going to again, again, hold your angle and you're just going to push up into it. Doing the back is a lot easier because it already has the angle. All you're trying to do, all your, your only goal is just to put that hair in there. And in my brain, I always say, go there, there. <laughs> and, there. and again, remember the lines are going towards the crown so you always put your needle this way don't do this way because then it will look crazy so and squish the baby's head a little bit all right i am going really slow so it's i'm trying not to go too fast so you guys can see Now it's gonna stick up like this. Don't worry about it. It's because it's long. Once you cut that hair, it's gonna lay flat. Okay, so again, here's a line here. And use your lines, the lines that you put in there as like checkpoints. Like, okay, I'm gonna get to this line and then I'm gonna take a break or go to another side or something. I don't like going all over the place because like I said before, you can like, you know, the hair can get all ratty and like tangled and possibly pull out, like pull out of the uh, vinyl because you're moving it around so much. And here I'm gonna put, I'm pinching it even more so I protect my needle and my angle. I'm pushing it away from you, sorry guys. So I figured, yeah. You can see, but you can't because I'm staring at it. <laughs> I can see better. So no, you can't see it. So 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm going right across the bottom. I'm almost done that strand of hair. Done that strand. Just gonna check and make sure there's no doubles. Oh, good. I'll try to spray it. Now, it usually takes me, I don't know. How long does it take me to do a head here? Uh, smaller ones, like five to six hours, I think. Now, the only time I cut the hair. You don't rush yourself. So. No, I don't. Because I like to do it. Yeah. I love doing it. It's my relaxing part. Okay, so when it comes to this part, obviously, I'm going to cut that. Because that will catch which it just did, so. But I always leave it as long as possible. Sometimes I don't know, like maybe this doll has like crazy long hair when it was a baby. We don't know. And because this is a pretty good piece of hair, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna hang on to this. I should put it off to the side somewhere and then I'll use that for baby hairs. There. So there you have. And that was just, like I said, this hair will last forever. So that's how much hair we've got. We almost fully did the swirl part. It was just a little bit of hair. Damn it. That's what it's going to look like in the front. So my goal is now is that when the hair is going to grow or grow <laughs> um, when it, when I put the hair in, when it get it rooted, the hair is going <laughs> to, the hair doesn't grow. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's going <laughs> to, it's going to hit this way and see how it naturally just lays down. It just wants to lay down properly. So that is that. So I'm going to work on this for, I'm gonna, I have two babies to do. And like I said, I have all this hair to do. And I did, I use like maybe half, uh, the same amount as this to do that. So tons of hair. So this will do two babies easy. And like I said, normally for a smaller baby, I would cut this in half like this show you i cut it in half like that snip and then take that end and make sure they line up with this part so you make sure you're going with the grain of the hair 
and then I'll do the baby. But because this is a bigger head and I have special plans for this baby, she's good. he is going to have long hair and then I'll trim it after. Yeah. So that is Elise by Cassie Brace, Old Sculpt. But getting some hair. So um, I don't know if I have anything else, but uh, if you guys have any questions at all, or you um, want to hit me up for some other tips, you can contact me. You can either message me. I just figured out how that I had a whole bunch of messages um, from on my YouTube held for review, and I had no idea. So, and it was like over a month ago. So I'm so sorry for everybody who did left me awesome comments and I didn't even respond. I'm sorry, I look like a jerk. Didn't mean to, um, but I figured out <laughs> that I have to check that. So if you have any questions, um, you can go to, you can email me to punkypiebabies at gmail.com. And I also have my uh, Facebook page, which I'm usually responding to as well. And yeah, I will have some babies for sale. So far right now, I don't. Um, I've been working on a lot of customs and I'm doing on these, these special projects, but I will have some babies available um, in the very near future. So, um, but I will let you guys know. Sorry, there's some. All righty. Okay, guys, I'm going to hop off here, finish up my babies because I got two heads to go. And uh, thanks for joining me. And I really appreciate you guys um, with all your support and hanging out. And yeah. And if I'm not following you on your, I'm not subbed to your channel, um, you know, hit me up. Just say, hey, how come you're not subbing to me? That's rude. And then I'll sub to you. Okay, guys, have a great one. And I will see you soon. Bye.